Hello, so uh, my name's Kate, and I don't want to be the only person who feels embarrassed by the next five minutes, so I'd like to invite you to participate in a short survey, if you don't mind, honestly, and also it's not going to be assessed, so don't worry about that. So could you please raise your hand if you are aware of the term, the selfie? And please, can you raise your hand if you have ever taken a selfie? Great. Now, for those of you who don't know, my, I am a graduate in photography, and I, I have very close ties with the DML project that is you, the toilet selfie. It is exactly what it says on the tin. It is a selfie taken on the toilet while you're doing your business. Now, how many of you, please raise your hand if you have ever taken a toilet selfie. Come on, don't be shy. All righty. Maybe that was a step too far. How many of you have ever sent a cheeky tweet or an email or had a bit of a browse on the internet whilst on the toilet? I think a lot of you are in denial. Come on. <laughs> Please raise your hand if any of you currently have diarrhea. <laughs> Please raise your hand if you have ever soiled yourself in public since your childhood. Please raise your hand if you have inflammatory bowel disease. Please raise your hand if you know of somebody else with inflammatory bowel disease, whether that is Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Thank you, you can stop now. <laughs> so, inflammatory bowel disease is a lifelong incurable illness that affects over 300,000 people in the UK and 1.5 million people in the US. Yet it took me over 10 years to meet somebody face to face with the condition. What it means is that our immune systems attack healthy, healthy cells in our digestive tract, causing inflammation. This inflammation then causes symptoms such as weight loss, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and for me, the worst of all, chronic and uncontrollable diarrhea. It's invisible. Looking at me, you do not know, or wouldn't have known, that I have Crohn's disease. And I had to grow up through my teenage years kind of dealing with that. And I didn't feel like I could empathize, or anybody could empathize with me, what that means. And so I tried to be a normal teenager. I tried to do the normal things that everybody else wanted to do. And I had to kind of deal with having Crohn's disease. And I felt alone, completely isolated. But thanks to the affordances of social media, it means that we don't have to be so alone anymore. Thousands of people now come online and we come into communities and we can share our stories and learn together. And I was, don't know what I was going to say next. <laughs> we can share a toilet selfie in solidarity and we can empathize with what that actually means. We spend an awful lot of time on the toilet. Um, yes. <laughs> um, but... There's a problem here. I feel like it, it's a big problem for me is that I do not know the next time that I'm going to have a Crohn's flare up and I don't, and it's kind of, that's problematic in itself, but I also don't feel as if I can actually participate in these communities. I don't feel like I can share my stories in them. Why? Because I don't trust the networks or the infrastructures that are in place right now to pr keep my data private and not to sell my data to the next highest bidder. What might my data mean to a pharmaceutical company or a health insurance agency in years to come? Now, a bigger problem than this is that I'm aware of this situation and I cannot unlearn what I now know about the digital economy, but there are thousands of people out there who aren't aware. And so, I just started my PhD <laughs> last week to try and deal with these kind of problems that I'm kind of facing right now. And so, and part of that, I would like to help move people from a position of misperceived privacy to a position of agency, where we can make better <coughs> decisions about our data sharing practices, and so that we can kind of start to mitigate against these potential consequences that we might not want to have, you know, when we share our data in the first place. And so, a toilet selfie you will not find in a public, you know, in the public space. These are in so-called private groups. These networks make it feel like these groups are private, but are they? 
at this point, I'd like you to join me in my PhD research, because I believe in openness and collaboration, and I don't feel like I can do this on my own. Many of you put your hands up today because you will know somebody with inflammatory bowel disease. How many of you would like to tell them about how they can better protect their privacy in the future and better to support them in the future anyway? So I'm done, but please, please help me. <laughs>